One of the first things I did when I got to Congress was to introduce a bill entitled the Chesapeake Bay Accountability and Recovery Act. And that bill proposes to do two specific things. One is to uh, look at where every penny is being spent on Chesapeake Bay recovery. Where is it being spent, what agencies are spending it, and determining exactly how many dollars are being spent. And this is something uh, that we can do uh, and also make sure that we take that information and perform what's called cross-cut budgeting and making sure that when we budget, we look across agency budgets as far as how agency budgets accomplish a particular task. And in this case, it would be the cleanup of the Chesapeake Bay and to make sure that we budget accordingly. It's been done in the past on other projects and we want to make sure that we are indeed bringing all of that information together so we're, we are making budgeting decisions <coughs> with some continuity as to the outcome of cleaning up the bay. So this bill would, would require cross-cut budgeting and OMB would, would be part of that to make sure we identified where every penny is being spent on the bay and to make sure budgeting decisions are made, being made across agencies. Secondly is to make sure that there is uh, a tool called adaptive management that's be, uh, to, to be used. And I know that the uh, EPA Chesapeake Bay office has talked about that. This bill would, would elevate it to, to another level to require that everybody that's dealing with resources looking at uh, the Chesapeake Bay, whether it's reduction of nitrogen or restoration of natural resources in the bay, that everybody there would look at making sure that they adaptively manage. Look at what the goals of the expenditure of those dollars would be are those goals being met? If they are not, why not? Uh, do we need to collect more data as to why these programs are, are working or not working? And to make sure that we are refining that effort as quickly as possible, and that is on, on an annual basis, and, and making sure that we have the data in front of us to make decisions. So I think those are important to make sure we fine tune the system to where we are making uh, decisions that are coinciding with uh, the dollars that are available to make sure that we are demonstrating results. In a lot of situations, there'll be some challenges there. I mean, we all know programs that we, we look conceptually and say, gosh, this, you know, this ought to work. We know there's some science behind it. Uh, what we have to do is to make sure that we're able to, to demonstrate those sorts of things on the ground. And if not, if we need uh, more time and more efforts to, to develop uh, some data to make sure that those things do indeed uh, show results, then those, those are things that we absolutely have to do. I think it's, it's extraordinarily important because I think we get to the point where when we talk to folks out in the public, and I hear this you know, almost on a daily basis when I talk about the Chesapeake Bay, when I go around the first congressional district and talk to folks and talk about the Chesapeake Bay efforts, they say, Rob, you know, we hear we're spending a lot of money, but, but we're not hearing you know, the sort of results that we'd like to hear on cleaning up the bay. And I said, well, you know, I think we're all frustrated with that. I said, realizing that we have a significant <coughs> increase in population in the bay watershed, you know, just marking time is indeed an accomplishment. Probably not the accomplishment we would all like to achieve, but uh, making sure we're stopping further degradation of the bay is an accomplishment. But we have to look at doing more, and I think, you know, folks out there are saying, gosh, you know, we, we really want to see some additional uh, improvements in the bay. What can we do to make that happen? And I think, obviously, government has a role, but what I have told folks in going forth is that the federal government, state governments, and local government absolutely play a role, but it is also going to take, I think, a change in the thought patterns of those, of those folks that live in the Chesapeake Bay <coughs> watershed. And that is something that is going, going to take time, but I think there has to be a sense of stewardship if you live in that bay watershed. And that has to be something that you essentially eat, live, and drink every day. It has to be something that's reflected in your lives, and there has to be an additional sense of responsibility if you are an individual that lives in the Bay Watershed, in addition to uh, governmental actions. I mean, there are a lot of things that we can do as a government, but there are also things that individuals have to do and have to accept responsibility to do and a sense of responsibility for the Bay that, 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 that they live on. So, you know, I think if we pursue those two efforts in parallel, making sure that we are uh, a cross-cut budgeting, making sure that we are adaptively managing all of our efforts in the, in, the, in the Bay water cleanup, whether it's at the state level, at the national level, or at the local level, and we instill a sense of responsibility into those people that live in the Bay watershed and really emphasize to them that Bay restoration will take place and will be successful with their participation. 
and, and telling them that it is indeed a partnership between government and individuals. And if we do that, I do believe that, that, that we can clean up the vein. I do believe that we can do that rather quickly. You know, if, if you look at what happens with, with the degradation of the bay, you know, I try to tell people it's not a straight line. It's not a straight line of decline. You know, as, as we see things happening with the bay, it's sort of a stepwise process. You know, you get to a point where you see certain things happen in parameters in the bay, and you get to that point, and then you have further conditions that degrade the bay. And instead of it going in a straight line, it sort of drops down to another step. And you have conditions that further degrade, and then the bay sort of drops down to another step. My concern is this, is that we don't get to the point where we can't recover some of those steps. And you know, we, we can get to a point where it's hard to recover. Now, I don't think any of us have misgivings that we'll ever get the bay back to the way it was when John Smith was here. But I do think it is very realistic to get the bay back to a condition where it was in the middle of this century, which is absolutely the most productive water body in the world. And I think that is a very, very reasonable and attainable goal and one that can be done in a fairly short period of time with the necessary efforts. And again, it is going to take an order of magnitude increase in effort, I believe, in order to get to that point. But I think it is uh, imperative that we do it. Obviously, we have requirements in the Clean Water Act that create some legal requirements to do it. But I think it's even more important than that. I think that there is a, a, I think a moral requirement on collectively on our part uh, in government and as citizens in the Bay to do all we can to, to restore the bay. And we are, I believe, at a tipping point where if we don't do uh, some significant, uh, in, or if we don't perform some significant improvements here soon, then uh, unfortunately I think we'll drop down stepwise in the progression of the degradation of the bay where we may not be able to get it back to where we all want it to be.